Thank you very much, Rick. And um, you guys ready to do this? If as many of you don't know or haven't been listening or paying attention, there's a thing happening in the country, United States of America, and in Michigan especially, and it's an overwhelming uh, support. Say the majority. I, I unfortunately have experiences what I would describe as the minority or the remaining institutions, but there are things happening across state that are very, very exciting and are going to bring some of this insanity to an end. And the people responsible for that really uh, effective. And I, what, I, what, I, what I described in the write-up is uh, here to talk about their, un, their undefeated record. we got Mickey Lolage from 1968. No, just kidding. We've got uh, Tim Beck and Chuck Ream. Gentlemen, thank you uh, for joining us tonight and uh, glad to have you guys on. Can you hear us okay? Yeah, yeah. My right. pleasure. My pleasure. Fantastic. And I know you guys are both at uh, Hash Bash, and we can keep you on uh, and, and comment about that later. But what an exciting time. I know this last week there was a uh, – I didn't hear the Godfather. Is the Godfather there, Tim? Are you uh... – Hello? Hello? Tim, great. Oh, we got you. Can you hear us? Oh, I'm a, oh, okay, I'm a... okay. Yeah, yeah, all righty. So with me are uh, two of the leaders of this uh, statewide ballot initiative for decriminalization and legalization. Um, this last week, and the people that are on the phone, of course, are uh, – I like to call him the godfather of marijuana in Michigan, Tim Beck, a 40-year cannabis reform activist and uh, self-proclaimed kindergarten teacher, Chuck Ream. Gentlemen, um, this last week there was an announcement of 12 cities. Really, it's, it's 11 cities and a county with multiple cities who are going to be um, moving to uh, get enough uh, petitions signed to get onto the uh, ballot in 2014 decriminalization or legalization measures. Explain uh, what's going on and uh, why there's uh, so much excitement and why this can be done again. You take so, it, Tim. Do you want to take that? <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I'll, I'll I'll just throw it out. I mean, what you know is really what, what seems to be going on is, is that people across the state are becoming empowered. You know, they 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 understand that change can take place. And and what on a microcosmic level, what we're doing, you know, in Michigan is the same thing that's doing on a macrocosmic level in uh, across the USA, specifically Colorado and uh, Washington State have broken, you know, from from the federal mainstream. They're saying no, we're we're going to do it our way, and. What's going on in Michigan is, you know, it's it's the same thing. Cities, municipalities are breaking off and saying, no, we're doing it our way. And, you know, again, it's a voter's thing. Uh, and, of course, the powers that be, you know, in those communities, I guess, if, if you like, you're in Ferndale, and, and Tim Collins, uh, the chief of police, is really the mayor or running the show. I guess Tim Collins can do anything he wants. But, um, <laughs> you know, on another level, Jackson and, and um, Grand Rapids and some of the other cities that we got coming up, they're going to do it their way. And that's going to, I think, change everything. And, and hopefully it'll lead to you know, some sensible um, uh, program of regulation, legalization, and, and so forth, so everybody's protected. Now, we've had on the show before some of the you know persons from the uh, MPP, and they've made it very clear that because of Michigan's uh, population and the demographics of uh, and locations of uh, spread out all over the state, it's a very expensive state to get the petitions yeah. signed, and that uh, you're looking at 2016, if anything. And I've heard you speak about in the past that this is a good way to get people involved, uh, engaged, empowered, as you describe. And every time they get to pull and pull the lever in favor of marijuana, it's a vote that you want to be able to count on for when, in fact, it happens. Um, Chuck, why don't you tell the listeners like how does how does one go about the uh, you know like it's like the Olympic uh, you know the Olympic uh, selection committee? I mean, how do you choose these cities and what are the variables that go into uh, choosing? Well, we choose the cities on the basis of having a competent local leader who is brave enough to stand up and carry the ball. Uh, we're still we're, we're winning now. We've got a majority now. But on the other hand, someone's house can be broken into, their dogs can be killed, their children can be taken, their cars can be taken, their bank accounts can be taken. Uh, so it's still a very brave thing for these local leaders in far-off towns 
I uh, haven't even told uh, Tim yet about interest in a town called East Jordan, mm-hmm. Michigan, which I never uh, I never knew there was. See, some of these towns are going to put themselves on the map by uh, running yeah. these initiatives. But uh, we've, got to- we've got big towns and small towns and towns that are Republican and Democrat. And uh, largely we do have to look at the demographics to feel that we've got a good chance of winning. But this year we feel the tide is turning and, and we probably – will win. You can't take anything for granted, but I'd, I would say the largest variable is to have a good local leader. Yeah, Tim, I would agree true? with that, Chuck. Yeah. I'm Tim, sorry, is Mike, it, go on, please. Is it, is it true that the uh, dynamics or the political party traditional alignment on certain issues doesn't apply in uh, marijuana? Is there more, you know, crossover on this issue than, say, uh, you know, a lot of these other very clearly defined political issues. It's, it's becoming that way, I would say, in the state of Michigan, you know, specifically. Um, yeah, I mean, there's always people like I mean, traditional conservatives, like, um, well, I would say Rick Jones. Uh, Shooty, that, that's a different breed altogether. I'm not even going to go there, okay? But but uh, on another level, um, yeah, there, there are the libertarian... You know, philosophy is on the ascendancy in the Republican Party, you know, nationwide and especially, you know, in Michigan. And what we're, you know, we're trying to do is a step-by-step process. I know most people want things to happen immediately, you know, like right away. There's just no patience. They want, you know, immediate gratification and so on. But, you know, over many years, that's just not how the way things seem to work. I mean, it's taken many, many, many years for this drug war and this anti-marijuana diatribe, you know, to to to, to inbreed, to inculcate itself and metastasize, you know, within the body politic. And mentors of mine say it sometimes it takes just as long, you know, to get this, you know, bacteria, uh, you know, so to speak, uh, you know, out of the system. And, and that's what we're doing. So I think on an overall pragmatic basis, what we're doing with these ballot initiatives, again, on a step-by-step basis, I think we're setting the stage, crossing our fingers, hoping that maybe in lame duck uh, we'll have a decent, you know, decrim, you know, thing like Ohio and so on and so forth. Again, it's not necessarily the right answer, but it's better than what we got now. And as Chuck was saying, you know, there's people coming out of the woodwork now. I mean, part of the selection process uh, was to have, as I say, competent leaders uh, that are courageous, that are there, that are willing to take personal responsibility for their own community. And Chuck and I and, you know, other people were there, you know, to help them. We're not there to control them, you know, and so on. And, And it's it's just starting to spread. I mean, really. Well, look, I'll name a couple names. I mean, uh, what the hell? You know, again, these are not guaranteed results. We don't know. I mean, the twelve that we've named uh, are are really in play. We're serious. This is hardcore, and we are determined. Everyone is determined that these are going to succeed. But I'll tell you a little tidbit here. Uh, <laughs> we're looking at maybe Berkeley, Huntington Woods, Pleasant Ridge. Gross Point Park and Portage. Oh yes, <laughs> yeah. This is breaking news, folks. And but you know, it's I mean, folks listening in, I find, and and I guess I'll deny that to the mainstream media. And and in reality, we don't have the process, uh, you know, completely set where we can declare that these are on the table. But I, they're getting close. And as Chuck alluded, people are coming out of the woodwork on this thing. It's it's absolutely extraordinary. I mean, this is just um, I don't know. People want to be part of it. They want to be part yeah, of this big change go. in history. And and in mm-hmm. history, almost every person is a subject, is someone who is acted upon. And very few people are willing to be actors in history to try to change history. And uh, now they're stepping up. It helps to have a majority in our favor now. But as I point out, still, uh, our people can be brutally treated. But now uh, these people are stepping up, and it's, it's, it's just so beautiful to see it in, in town after town, big towns, small towns, etc. Well, this Andrew 
Sissel, by the way, if Andrew Sissel is listening, Andrew, we love you. Yeah, you know, this guy, yeah, he, he it's, but I, I don't know, I, I'm maybe, I, I don't want to get into, you know, various allegations or talk about his case, but let me, let me put it this way. I mean, this young man is, is a hero. He is hardcore, and he almost reminds me of Ryan Basor, actually. You know, Ryan, if there's anybody, um, there was a lot of people responsible for the win, you know, in Lansing. That was a big one. But really it was Ryan that got this thing going, and he worked up until three days before he had to report to Morgantown Prison. And, and, you know, this is the same with Andrew, you know, and, and, you know, to the best of our knowledge and belief, you know, Andrew only um, was involved with cannabis, period, cannabis, something that should not be a crime. And and he's young enough, and, and I'll tell you, this, this young man is a superstar in my mind. He's up on charges now, right? Yeah, well, you know, he got, he did, he, I mean, he got, I guess he's he's on probation now because of that, you know, um, situation in, you know, in Ferndale. I, you know, his attorney, I, it took the jury like three days, you know, to come to a decision. You know, and his attorney argued that he really didn't have any. He lived in three places, basically. He had no real, you know, home, so to speak. You know, and which is true. I, I mean, I believe that. But again, a jury had spoken. You know, and so therefore, he did get sentenced to probation for eighteen months, and you know, a couple of grand in fines and stuff like. But he's not quitting. Now he's up on some very serious charges, and those charges he was supposed to go on trial at the end of this month, but it's been postponed. Uh, you know, till the end of May, and he's going for a jury trial. But I'll tell you, this young man, you know, and Deborah Young, and some others, they are working every day, every day. You know, they're they're completely focused, and it's an extraordinary thing to see. And and as Chuck was mentioning, East Jordan and these folks in Portage and Gross Point Park and all over, friends. I mean, this is really taking on some momentum. Chuck people want to done, but people want to finish now. They really have had it. Everybody wants to participate in finishing it right off because everybody's fed up. It's gone on too long, and it's got to stop now. Got to stop like the Berlin Wall, not slowly like a creeping kind of a thing, but just wham, smash down. Well, that's what I want to ask you, Chuck. Um, uh, do you would you agree with the statement that we're clearly in a different or a better place than we were, say, five years ago with? You know the, the newly enacted Michigan Medical Marijuana Act, and and you know, in other words, as we stand here today, some five years later, you know, you've got you know two or three uh, voter cycles that uh, produced some kind of positive, you know, uh, reform of of prohibition of marijuana in these various cities, and you're announcing another twelve or fifteen or sixteen. It sounds like. I mean, well, it appears that way. I mean, again, we we've got to. I, I mean, I think it's going to happen. I mean, we got twelve for sure. Right. Okay, well, but 12, there's another five. But but yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. No, I was just saying, like the you know, it's there's a, there's something going on here, and you're saying like people want to get involved. Do you think? Do would you attribute that to, you know, it's it's people feel more comfortable of coming out and supporting it now because it's more in the mainstream. Do you think that there's people that would have been against it, but they've seen now in Michigan that for five years nothing catastrophic happened? You know, no one's died from it. No one's running around like zombies killing people. There's no real crime that's been attributed at all in any way. I mean, all the violations are always, you know, based on technical nonsense. You know, there's no statistic that says crime has gone up. You know, there's no statistic that says kids are getting it where they weren't getting it before. There's no more accidents. You know, do you think that those kind of statistics as the, as the general population outside of the medical or cannabis community sees it. Do you think the perception of how the act has been implemented, you know, has positively affect this, this legalization effort? Yeah. The fact that nothing has gone wrong uh, is part of the reason support has gone up. And the fact that people understand the medicine works really well is another reason that the support has gone up. Here in Michigan, we're in a really good position now. We have our two bills for dispensaries and for edibles and concentrates ready to pass. They're going to pass before the summer, I hope. It's been a long, hard struggle. Nobody knows for sure. But those two bills should pass, and then we should have uh, safe access to patients. And one by one, towns will open up 
uh, and we'll have dispensaries in places other than Ann Arbor and Genesee County. But then beyond those two bills, we've got our DCRIM bill sitting there in committee, and I saw one article today that said it probably never will come out. But uh, if we can put uh, 10 or 12 or, or more wins up that are convincing wins, if we have no losses, uh, I think there's going to be a climate to, to do something about passing DCRIM in lame duck when they don't seem to give a damn what they do. They kind of just stuff everything in there. Mm-hmm. And we've got these huge national changes on the national scene, both in governmental changes and in the media with Sanjay Gupta and everything. Yeah. No, I would say, I mean, the ducks are, seem to be getting in a row. And I heard, and I, you know, and again, I, I said on another radio show, don't take this as gospel. But, you know, from what I've heard from credible sources in, in Lansing, is the Senate Majority Leader and the Speaker of the House are okay with, uh, you know, a kind of basic decrim. We're not talking about legalization now. It would be a scenario where it's a civil infraction, like in Ohio and New York and, and you know, stuff like that. Uh, again, a step-by-step process. And I think what these, like, these leaders want, uh, they they need other people. And, and I think, you know, uh, Jeff Irwin, and I would say they're, Mike Shirky. Now, Mike Shirky is the author of Right to Work. Oh, yes. I mean, some people don't like that, but, but again, he's uh, you know highly respected in the GOP hierarchy, and he's got a guaranteed, practically a guaranteed result to move on to the state Senate uh, yeah, uh, this, this November because an incumbent unexpectedly retired. So Mike will be in power for, for the next, well, eight years, and, um, you know, he's a believer. He's a libertarian, you know, kind of guy and a self-made man, um, you know, a long history with General Motors, and he started his own company and, you know, on and on and on. He, you know, he gets the picture. And um, I think, you know, looking at that situation along with the speaker and everything else, if we can pull this off, this tsunami, <laughs> as, as it's been termed, uh I think we're Michigan is very well on the way to being a, de- a decrim state. Again, that's not good enough for some people, but hey, what the heck? You know, uh, it's just that it's just how, you know how things get done, and um, I think that, you know there's there's just there's a momentum going. That, that's all I can say. That's what I'm what thinking. And, and again, the idea, I mean, Jeff Irwin is a very, very, he's in the minority, but he's a very, very smart individual. And so is Shirky, and so are other GOP leaders that sense that the Republican Party will be out of power for the next generation if they don't begin to change their ways. And I'm talking on a national level. Let me ask you, That's all. You're suggesting, Tim, that in addition to these you know, twelve or, or possibly more cities that you're in, you're actually suggesting that these uh, legislators that you speak of are going to potentially get done a statewide decrim bill, and that they're going to work diligently and they think that it can be done, even though it may not be the impact of a legalization like, but it, it's still the statewide recognition of a lesser view given by the legislature to the law enforcement community to, you know, not take such a big and give them an option of how to address these issues in a non-criminal way. You're suggesting that this is a potential or reasonable possibility. Yeah, that's what I'm suggesting. Yes, Michael. Yeah, yeah. That's why I see. Uh, that's what I see shaping up here. And, and you know, again, we can't take anything for granted. You know, that's and, right. And, and, uh, yeah. Thank you, Chuck. Yeah, we can't. And, yeah. You know, and these twelve cities. I believe. I mean, we've there, there's been a kind of vetting process, if you could use that term, you know. And and the reports that we're beginning, good lord, from Lapeer and Port Huron and 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 Mount Pleasant, Chuck, you know, you can chime in. I mean, you're mentoring some, I'm mentoring others. We got to. It's all about the mayor effect. of uh, Hazel Park. The mayor. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Well, uh, Hazel Park, Chuck. I mean, guys. I, I, everybody signed their petition. It, yeah, the well, it, it, they could very well. I would not be shocked, okay, if, if the like I call them, I call them Andrew and Deborah and, and the others. I call them the Woodward Avenue crew. 
<laughs> you know, and you know, I I think you know the the the, the Woodward Avenue crew uh, ha, have got things uh, you know lined up to the point where they're going to get it. Will they will get the signatures within two days, within forty eight hours? We need fifty one good ones in, in Hazel Park, and then it's an ordinance change, and therefore it goes to the city council in Hazel Park, which the mayor is first among equals. And I believe, we'll see what will happen once those things are turned in. Uh, they have the option of, within 30 days, they can either vote it into law themselves or the only other choice is send it to the voters, period. Yeah. And you know what? I think, I just got a gut feeling, I, I can't prove it in a laboratory experiment, but <laughs> I got a feeling that this will never go to the voters, I think that will be historic. That, that will be, be historic. That will be heavy duty. That will be big. Yeah, yeah. But we do have information that supposedly three council people plus the mayor are yeah. for us. And that's yeah. the city we'll of Hazel Park. You're talking about Tim, is that Hazel right? Park. Hazel Park. Correct. Right. Thank you. Exactly. The mayor. Yes, uh, Rick. Yeah. You. Uh, we should forward you the picture, the photo of the mayor signing the petition with Andrew Sissel with a beautiful smile and a beautiful suit. Uh, on right behind the mayor, and the mayor is signing our petition. It's wonderful. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, yeah, we've been so far uh, so good. Sometimes we're not even uh, organized by the time the snow melts. And uh, well, <laughs> the snow the snow is taking a long time to melt. That's been good. But uh, in terms of us being organized yeah, so before it all, I'm melts. telling you, I got a report. I got a report just yesterday. The Oak Park now has all the signatures in the bag. You're kidding. Yeah. No, no, that's what they – well, yes and no. Uh, wow. What I'm saying, they need 1,170 good SIGs. They got a growth of 1,200 right now. Okay. They want to go – obviously, they need a cushion. But you know what? They've got until, um, well, uh, another two weeks. May 7th, yeah. Yeah, right. All right. And Hazel Park. See, part of the strategy is to keep this whole thing in the media just going on and on and on, where all of a sudden there's constant reports every, you know, practically every day or whatever, just going on the news wire. Oh, marijuana, 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 blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Constant so, victory. Yeah, exactly. And, and so what we're we're looking to do is have at least a couple of these, like Oak Park and Hazel Park, if Hazel Park goes that far, to be on the primary ballot in August, so that'll be a media hit in August, and then uh, then come November we have this whole bunch of other ones that are you know hitting the fan, so to speak, and uh, it's just going to be a constant mantra of legalization, regulation, blah, you know, whatever. Tim, how do you how does it get determined whether it's on the primary ballot or on the regular ballot in November? Is that based on the type of, of initiative that's done, or is that something chosen by those uh, sponsors in the local communities? No, it's purely it's pure, well, it's purely set by state law. Uh, you know, there's turn-in times. You know, you have to have. You know, Chuck, and you maybe you can correct me here, but I believe in order to get on the primary in August, you have to have all whether it's a charter amendment or if it's an ordinance change, you have to have all the things in. I think what April sometime, days. Chuck. Ninety yeah, days ahead of Prior time. To oh, that's right. Yeah. The next election. Yeah. So the crew, the Woodward Avenue crew, you know, is, is yeah. Well, they're they're I'm they're going to have it. <laughs> they're going to have it in by in a timely fashion. So ninety days ahead, so it will be on the ballot in August, and the rest of the initiatives will hit in November. Yeah. Am I right, and, Chuck? Uh, what do you think? Yeah. Correct. Yes. Uh, Ninety days uh, prior to the primary, which I think is on the fourth of August, fourth or the fifth. <laughs> anyway, ninety days prior to is May seventh. So we need to say May sixth to be safe. Uh, so turning in date, turning in date for the primaries ballot. The primary ballot is May sixth. Uh, yeah. Well, there's all okay. kinds of claims out there, Chuck, from pseudo experts. But you know, I, I, I yeah. Yeah, well, no, but the deadline, as Chuck said, it's definitely, it's no later than August, or, I'm sorry, May 6th, and some Jim, experts say it could be earlier, but anyway, I'm sorry. I don't know if you heard in the news that I reported on that uh, 
uh, legalize Marquetta said they're going to, to do a decrim on 2.5 ounces. Uh, what other cities have announced the nature of their decriminalization efforts? I know there are so many cities, and I apologize because it might be a difficult no. one to span. But which which cities are going to go for which plans? If you don't have, if you don't mind, I'll let you start, Tim. Okay. Well, you know, specifically, I don't know. You mentioned Marquette. I don't know. You know, Chuck and I have reached out to those folks, and. and I, I, you know, I don't know. They're they're keep they're playing their cards very close to the vest. So uh, neither Chuck or I can speak about Marquette as to how you know serious or whatever it is. But I'll you know the benefit of the doubt. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. You know, in Marquette they, because they just for whatever they, reason, they, this is not a put down. Chuck, have they communicated with well, you? Or? They were real quiet. When I first called the guy, he talked to me, and then they've been really quiet for two weeks, right. not communicating with anybody, not answering any calls. But then today we get this media thing showing that they're oh, apparently still, okay. still alive. And uh, okay. that's fresh, <laughs> isn't it, Rick? That's not just a rehash of the old stuff. That's fresh, that's right. isn't it, Rick? Towards the safer Michigan communities, the ones that you guys are, are involved in. I was really All looking right. for accounting for safer All Michigan right. communities. Okay. All right, let's go through them. All right, Tim, East Lansing, that is... The legalization. That's your project. Wow. Why don't you go through your, your 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 mentorship, Chuck, and then I'll go through mine. Or, okay, or whatever. Just go through okay. All right. Notebook. And, and All right. So East Lansing sure. is the sure. uh, uh, one ounce of uh, adults on private property. Uh, Frankfort Benzie County is the Ann Arbor Grand Rapids model. The civil fines, small civil fines, no criminal involvement. Port Huron is Tim. Mm-hmm. Well, we've got some, well, we've got some standard language, you know, for for a number of them. And I don't have my uh, well, I don't God darn it, I don't have my notes. Here. Well, okay, all right, all right, all right. Let me let me let me just recollect here. You know, what these these are mostly either charter amendments and and one or two of them are ordinance changes. And one specifically, uh, it makes possession, use, transfer or transportation of an ounce or less of, you know, marijuana, uh, no longer a crime. So it's officially legalization. Uh, or, and, and we've added and it's been tweaked uh, some other... A little, yeah, it's been tweaked a little bit. You know, I, I can tell you, you know, and, and this is at least four or five of them. Um, I'm going to get my notes right right, right, right here. Um so in other words, Tim okay. doesn't know which, yeah. what Port Huron is. Well, you know, right no, no, no. I. I can tell you exactly about Port Huron. Hey, hey, hang on. No, what, what? It... Right, Saginaw's doing the legalization of one ounce. Well, right, right, yeah, property. right. No, the, the, the deal. Oh, dang it. Um, okay, I'm going to get one of the petitions, like right now. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm okay, here, here yeah. we. All right, all right, here we go. Here, here we go. This is this is the touchstone. Um, okay, um, nothing in the code of ordinances shall apply to the use, possession, or transfer of less than one ounce of marijuana on private property not used by the public yeah, or transportation. Of yeah, yes, yeah. Or transportation, that's another tweak too, or transportation of less than one ounce of marijuana by a person who has attained the age of 21 years. And, and that's it. Uh, yeah. So that's a legal Well, that's Saginaw, Lapeer. Lapeer. So yeah. Mm-hmm. So Saginaw is the same as that. Lapeer is the same as that. Right. Port it's Huron. Not, okay. Thing. You, okay. Uh, well, Oak Huron. Park. Oak Park also. Okay. Oak, Oak Park, Park is yeah. the same as that. Okay. Utica is a L-L-E-P. Utica is a lowest law enforcement priority uh, run by a guy named Mike uh, Lumetta, uh, who I uh, personally have confidence in. I haven't heard from him real lately. Okay, Claire. Uh, is Jamie there tonight? Yes, Jamie. I am. I am here. Okay, uh, Claire is in play, and uh, uh the uh, leader You're there at the civil infraction uh, model, like Grand Rapids. Yeah. 
Yeah, they're, okay, they're the civil infraction in model in Claire and I think in uh, in Harrison also. Isn't that true, Jamie? Uh, Harrison? Yeah, that yeah you're Jamie. Good. You're sort of the sponsor of these things. I mean, <laughs> he's working on those. He's working on yeah, right. And uh, yeah, he, Jamie's working on uh, East Jordan, too, which I had to look up. I, uh, mm-hmm. Like I said, that's, that's, in the thumb, is that, that's in the thumb. That's along the lake, uh, isn't it? Or something? Northwest. No, no. Charlevoix County. West. Charlevoix County. Bernice Golf Club. Oh, that's on the west side, then. Yeah, north. Yeah, well, okay. Uh, um, Okay, so Mount Pleasant, Tim, you Mount Pleasant is well. That's I'm your project, able... Chuck. I mean, I, yeah, yeah it, it, indeed, I mean, that yeah. is my project, and I sure <laughs> as hell wish I knew what they were doing for sure. But uh, <laughs> I think I think well, they're Brandon, doing the Brandon, Brandon McQueen and Jericho Simon are are the two you know yeah. main persons, and I, I mean, I heard stories to the effect that they they've got a fair amount of signatures right now. Oh, they're all charged up. They've got a yeah. good. A section of their signatures, and they've got this uh, really close contact with the student government. The student government there is passing different uh, um, initiatives, uh, like making uh, punishment for cannabis e- equivalent to alcohol or no, no greater than, and great right. stuff. Uh, well, and there's East Lansing, Lansing too. That Jeff Hank, he's a veteran. Yeah, he's and a vet. Will do he, a great, he, uh, yeah, in, in job. East Lansing, yeah, he handled. Land, land, yeah, Lansing. He was. Yeah, spoke well, my him. assumption is that we're we're running in Mount Pleasant, the Ann Arbor Grand Rapids model, and even though I'm the advisor there, I completely her. And Tim, Tim at the pier is the legalization petition on away. Okay, on away, Michigan. Um, Ron Langworthy, um, campaign manager, is uh, Brad Forrest. Brad Forrest there. Yeah. In Hanaway. and uh, Brad, Brad wrote a brilliant, um, a little campaign uh, leaflet kind of thing. But uh, anyway, Hanaway uh, is a small town, and they're doing the uh, civil uh, infraction uh, ordinance. Um, I mean, keep in mind, you know, it's really uh, interesting. Some of these people, the places, it just doesn't take many signatures. For God's sakes, I mean, was was it forty four signatures in Claire? For God's sake, I mean, 51 signatures in Hazel Park. I mean, wait a minute. That's just you know, an Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. But on another level, let's take Gross Point Park for instance. All right, Gross Point Park takes 425 signatures. Period. To do a charter amendment, Gross Point Park has 11,000, um, you know, population, and boy. I mean, let's say if Gross Point Park, for instance, were to pass something like that, that's going to get the attention of the Republican Party. And I think, you know, this is not a declaration. You know, at this point, there's some finessing going on. But uh, I tell you, uh, you know, the the, the little secret here is that, you know, I mean, Chuck and I, and you know, kind of figured out a thing, right, Chuck? I mean, that this is... After a lot of years and months of brutal um, labor in the vineyards, you know, um, we've kind of got this down to a science. And, 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 and Tim, and Tim yeah. is hooked on it, and Tim wants the adventure <laughs> of having his own campaign, and so I think Tim is setting out to pursue Gross Point Park. And if we could put one of the Gross Points into our demographic uh, bag, I think we have a pretty powerful. I mean, we've well, I can't state, reveal. Na- I can't reveal. I can't reveal names, Chuck. Okay, but no, you know who no, I'm talking clearly. about. You, you know no, this clearly. individual I'm talking about. This individual, I guess, is well. This person has agreed to carry the flag. Yeah, so that's we're what looking this is information. Good. Well, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty good there. Just yeah. a fanatic in charge. Tim, let me ask you this. I know that there's a. I know that all this is based upon the uh, Michigan. Initiative rule in the local cities. There is a distinction in some of the uh, villages and townships as opposed to other cities. If I'm not mistaken, do you, is there any, you any do anything about that? It may be too much of a legal, but do you, do you know what I'm talking about? And uh, do you have a comment on that? Yeah. No. The problem is, and Chuck, you can you know I'll correct disabuse me here, but no townships 
do not have. I mean, I, we never really deeply, you know, got into it, but um, under the Michigan Home Rule Cities Act, every incorporated city or municipality must have a ballot initiative process, period, you know, with, within their code or within their charter. Now, on another level, you know, if you were an incorporated chartered city, you have to conform to the Michigan Home Rule Cities Act, which specifies for every city, incorporated city in Michigan, the rule for a charter amendment is 5% of registered voters, period. That's incontrovertible. And, you know, I'll give you a practical example. The city of Detroit. Detroit the Detroit city charter, which has, uh, you know, it takes 5% of registered voters, allegedly, there are like a half a million or more, allegedly, <laughs> in Detroit. So that would take like 30,000 signatures to change the um, charter. Well, on the other hand, you know, to initiate a change in ordinance, it takes 3% of the vote for mayor in the last election, and that's the number you need. So when we got, you know, well, ultimately when we made the ballot, it went all the way to the Supreme Court, but 3% of registered voters meant 4,800 signatures. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's good so it's pretty radic. Yeah. Well, now in Lansing, I would say Lansing was the biggest challenge our community or the ballot, whatever, that we faced. Because the rule in Lansing to amend an ordinance, it was 5% of registered voters to change the charter. It's 5% of registered voters. And there were, you know, we needed over 4,000 good signatures in, in a community of, you know, about 100,000 people. That was that was a tough one, you know. And Ben Horner and, and, and um, Jeff Hank, Lance Enderley, uh, these guys. I mean, they were heroic. And Chuck, you were too. I mean, you know, that was very, very edgy. That was very touchy. Much closer. We almost didn't make it. We almost didn't yeah, make we've, it. We've got this perfect record, but no one knows. No. Uh, how much blood we've sweat and how close we've come yeah. many times. But if my, did I answer your question, Michael? I mean, a lot of it is just, it's based on numbers. Our strategy is to go with whatever, whether it's an ordinance change or it's a charter amendment, we go with the method that requires the least amount of signatures. Understood, understood. Yeah. Well, listen, I want to... Um I want to take a break. I know we've got some other guests that are going to be on talking about hash that both of you are at. Would you? Uh, I don't want to put you guys on the spot. If you would like to, uh, we'd love to have you stay after the break and add your thoughts as we uh, continue to celebrate the reform of cannabis in Michigan by uh, getting a little uh, discussion about the hash You guys hang out, or you can decide uh, as we're as we're. Breaking. Michael, I'm 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 staying around. I'm going to listen, and this is a great show this evening. I'm 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 going to stay around. Fantastic. I'll right. probably listen in right. too. Okay. All right. Thank you, man. All right. We're going to take, we're going to take a quick break and uh, get back with our uh, next guests. Jamie, is in the queue? He does not know. Your guess is as good as his. Oh, right, it's a surprise. We're Santa Claus. We have Santa yeah. Claus. Yeah. yeah. And as we take a quick break and uh, come back and uh, get right back into it, we're talking hash bash and uh, the impact it's had on uh, marijuana reform and what what its meaning was in 2014. And uh, the call number is one three four seven three two six nine six two six. And uh, we will be right back. Uh-huh. 